This is the Netherlands. It's a country that loves cheese, has more bicycles than people, and the Dutch are amongst the tallest people in the world. Now there's no mountains or grand canyons, but here in the north there's a different, very special and impressive part of nature that could be saved by pear trees. This area right here is called the Warrensee, and it's not only a part of the Netherlands. This whole coastal line is part of the Warrensee. Here's the Dutch part, there's the German national parks, and finally it covers most of the Danish maritime conservation area. It is the largest unbroken system of intertidal sand and mudflats in the world. There's so many different plant and animal species, from seals to porpoises. Por porpoises? Porpoises. Most of the Warren Sea is permanently covered by water. But in some places, the water will completely disappear during low tide, making it possible to literally walk to any of these islands. It's also one of the most important areas in the world for migrating birds. So honestly, it's no surprise that this area is part of the UNESCO World Heritage. But there is a problem. Obviously, the Dutch are not just throwing pear trees into the sea for no reason, even though they've probably done weirder stuff. So the Warren Sea is struggling with a change and loss in biodiversity. Over the last 2000 years, there's been new species introduced and also a lot of species that went extinct. If you look at this picture, you can see Wim Wolf. He was a Warren ecologist and he played an enormous role in international mudflat research. And this chart, based on his data, shows how many species actually went extinct. Black bars mean they're gone forever, and a lot more are threatened at the moment. The sea floor used to be covered with rich oyster beds that attracted fish, mussels, crabs and shrimp. But nowadays they're all gone. Due to over-exploitation, trawling and dredging, the bottom is soft, flat and in general not a great place to be. So why pear trees? Well this was an idea from John Dixon, who is a researcher at the Royal Netherlands Institute for Sea Research. John was aware of a very important issue that started when the Dutch mastered their control over water. And for anyone who doesn't know, the Dutch are like water wizards. They have bridges for boats, windmills pumping away water and creating whole new parts of land, a lot of dikes to keep their feet dry, and of course, the Maaslandkering. It's a giant set of curved doors that block off the ocean when the sea level rises too high. Now before the Dutch were building all these dikes, controlling the water levels and managing the flow of water, trees would fall into the rivers and they eventually found their way to sea. After a while, the wood sank down to the bottom and this gave some structure to the sand. It was fundamental for mussels, oysters and the wood attracted tons of fish, crabs and other animals. This all stopped when rivers started being controlled and trees were cut down to make space for farmland. So basically what's going on is John and his fellow researchers are trying to recreate this natural phenomenon and they do that by using pear trees to create artificial reefs. What's funny by the way is that John got his idea while he was on a cycling trip. And even though John is from Canada, it doesn't really get more Dutch than that. I mean, getting your best idea while riding a bicycle. The only thing that could have made it more Dutch is if he was also eating a broodje croquette while rain was pouring down. So John passed a bunch of pear trees and he was shocked when he learned how many of those trees were simply thrown away after the economic cycle. And just so you know, every year in the Netherlands, there's about 400 hectares or a thousand acres of fruit trees being discarded. That's a very cheap source of wood. And John decided to use that wood for his experiment. So in 2022, with concrete blocks attached to their roots, 192 trees disappeared into the Warren Sea. They placed a bunch of cameras onto the concrete and by using animal-friendly cages and reeling up some of the reefs during set intervals, they kept track of the life that started to develop. And what happened wasn't exactly what they expected. So John and his team obviously expected that the reefs would attract some life. But they never could have dreamt that only after six months, the reefs were booming with life. Barnacles, mussels, bryozones, 
They also found six different species of fish around the reefs, while 200 meters further on the plain sandy bottom, they only found two species. The amount of fish in numbers was five times higher, the amount of prawns was ten times higher, and on top of that, the fish and the prawns also grew significantly bigger. So John's pear tree experiment was a massive success, a bigger one even than they could have ever hoped for. With this experiment, John and his team proved that pear trees are a cheap and effective way to create artificial reefs that can enhance local maritime biodiversity. And all of that within a very short time span. Now on a more critical note, John is very much aware that this is just one example. This experiment was done in a specific area, the Wadden Sea, so obviously they don't know how effective pear trees could be in other oceans. And there's also still a lot of questions that can only be answered in time. Like how long will these reefs last? And what species will eventually settle in the long term? But nonetheless, it's amazing to see how something so simple as a pear tree has the power to help kickstart sea life in threatened waters. So the potential for positive change in the future is very much there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was interesting. Uh, if you did like it, I would really, really appreciate it if you could leave a like or a comment or even subscribe. And if you have any feedback, please, please do let me know because I really try to improve every video I make and your feedback could really, really help. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video.